Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. This is Julia. Thank you for joining me. Is it a good time for van life with everything going on with such uh, so many unknowns out there? In this video, I want to talk with you about why I think it's a great time for van life. Could there even be a better time than now for van life? You know, I've been feeling this uneasiness this uh, this urgency to send you this message here and it's the same urgency I felt before I moved into my first van which actually was a truck with a shell for a couple months then it was a van um and the urgency was you know no matter how much I worked holding down an apartment working all the time I could not save any money and I just kept feeling like, oh my God, something's going to happen where I'm going to be unprepared. And I hated the idea of being one of those people that was like, la, 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 nothing's ever going to happen. And then when the SHTF happens or something really bad happens, that those people wouldn't be prepared. But I knew better. The only problem was I couldn't get together enough money or resources to actually be more prepared. And one of the reasons I moved into a van was I realized by living in a van and not having rent and utilities, but while still working, which I could do at the time, that I could save all of that money and have some kind of larger savings for whatever would come and that I would have a little home base no matter what. And this was also after a series of you know, roommate situations or trying to hold down my own apartment. Either one of them was so difficult. So it was this sense of urgency. And this was pre 9-11. And I remember talking with people about it. Like, you never know what could happen. And it seemed to me like people just felt really like, oh, nothing's ever going to happen, you know? And I always wondered, like, why are all the wars over on someone else's land? Isn't, surely someone wants to attack us here at some point. I was like, yeah, that. How could this not eventually happen and we're going to be in trouble? So it did happen during 9-11. And with everything going on now, we didn't suspect that this would happen either. Although I've been saying, and many people have been saying for a long time, of course there's going to be some kind of virus or back, um, pandemic because, you know, we're a highly populous group that's spread out all over the world and we're constantly interacting. We've got airplanes traveling um all locations all the time and there's bound to be something come up that's going to spread around and I was surprised it hadn't happened already so this is this feeling of urgency of being prepared for the future now having moved into a van I feel like it did set me up better because I have my own home at any time but I will say this for the course of this pandemic because I live in a van it was a lot and has been a lot easier for me. Um, in the beginning, it was pretty scary because <laughs> everything was really shut down. I was in a city, San Diego, and you know, even the libraries and everything was shut down except for the grocery stores and gas stations. And I thought, and nobody was around. So there I was in my van out in a parking lot somewhere with a few others wondering, what are they going to do? Are they going to pull up to my van and be like, hey, you have to go to this homeless shelter or something like that, or you have to go be tested or you have to go here or there? Well, it was very scary in the beginning, but none of that happened. In fact, they seemed to be a lot more lenient with us, which was a really good thing. And since then, I would say it's been really pretty easy um, to be out here in a van, living in a van during this pandemic. I haven't had any trouble um, because I came north. It's less populated up here and there's more space. Um, and so, and this is a part of the country and my state, California, that has not been as affected by the pandemic. There's fewer cases. It's been really good up here. But recently, uh, California, the counties up here have been put into the purple tier, which is the worst tier because there's rising cases. So um, it's hard to imagine that when you're out here, there's nothing really out here um, and people aren't freaking out at all. Um so it seems pretty normal up here, but that got me thinking again about this subject. The thing is, if things have changed, we need to adjust to those changes. And I'm sure a lot of you out there have done that. But I keep hearing news stories about people using credit to pay their rent, people going through their savings to pay their rent. And of course, now we have January coming, which... um 
the end of the unemployment benefits as we've known them thus far are coming to an end and no clear decision has been made about what's coming next and no clear decision has been made about a new stimulus check either. And so I think it's a really, really good time to, if you haven't already got your house in order, it's time to adjust, adjust to the new situation. If you have lost your job or your income is down and you're still in an apartment with the same expenses that you had before. So minimizing your stuff down is going to help you get your house in order to be able to adjust and be flexible to whatever comes next. The other thing is, and what helped me really get rid of a lot of my stuff in the beginning, was to sell a lot of it. And I sold a lot of things on Craigslist in about a two-week period, just pieces of jewelry and little knickknacks and baskets and, you know, stacks of miscellaneous fabric. I sold all of that and I gathered about 800 bucks in a couple weeks just from you know, extra stuff. And I hadn't even got to the core of the stuff I really did want to keep. (laughs) But one thing I found as I went through this process of letting go more and more and more was that you can, it becomes easier and easier. You find that you don't need it and that there's always more stuff. That's the thing that, you know, was the light bulb moment for me. If there's anything we have in this society is plenty of stuff. And so you can always get more stuff. The only caveat to that, I would say, is vintage stuff. I had a lot of beautiful things that I didn't want to get rid of because it took a long time to gather these things up because they were vintage or special. The thing about the items being made these days is those things will never become vintage because they're made so, you know so poorly that they're going to fall apart. They're not going to stick around and be vintage. So I can tell you from personal experience of having pared everything down numerous times to the point where everything I own is in my van. And let me tell you, there was a lot of fear surrounding getting rid of that last little storage unit because I was like, okay, if I really pare everything down to just this van, who am I? What does that make me? I mean, wouldn't I be like a total loser? I wouldn't have anything. And it gave me this sense of feeling a little bit lost in the world. But that's just how attached I was to all of the material things in my life. And what I've found since then is I no longer have that fear. I feel completely comfortable with what I have. And I don't ever think about the things that I let go. Well, maybe one or two things now and again. (laughs) Because I did have really nice vintage used items. But that fear is pretty much gone now because... I am very comfortable living with everything I own in this van, and I don't feel like a loser at all having let go of all of that stuff. So I can tell you from experience. The other thing is, of course, we need to lower our expenses. So if you've got things out there that you aren't using or that are some premier level where you can bring it down to a basic or a free level service, Um, If you're still washing your car, I suggest you go out there and wash it by hand. Is there any way that you can become more frugal? The best way I know of spending less money is making my own food. And that is a real money saver for a van lifer or for anybody else. And I'll tell you the weird thing about van life that I discovered was that, you know, you think, okay, I'm not going to be working for someone else anymore. It's going to open up all of this time. Well, the truth is you're really exchanging one job for another. Instead of working for someone else and gathering money and then paying for meals, paying for a house cleaner, paying for a dog sitter, uh, paying for all kinds of things, you know, paying for someone to um, dry clean your wool sweater instead of hand washing it, um, all of those things that we pay for, instead of that, instead of earning that money to pay for that, you end up doing all of that yourself. You're sitting there hand washing the sweater in the wool cleaner. You're sitting there making your own meals. You're mending the button on your sweater. Um, You are gathering water now. You can't just turn on the thing. And you're emptying your toilet. You have to keep emptying this toilet. So in a way, like uh, some free, there's more free time in a sense, but a lot of that time is taken up by now doing all the things you were paying someone else to do, essentially. I mean, even just putting out your solar in order to collect energy so that you can have you know, electricity in your van is another way where you've got to do the job yourself. And so, you know, I would get so frustrated, like, God, it takes so long to do all of these things. I'm not, you know, I feel like I'm not working enough on like productivity, like stuff that actually brings in money. I'm just maintaining everything all the time. That's kind of the trade-off that I've discovered in van life. So, um, and it makes me feel more like a tribal person because I'm like doing all the things for myself.
And that's what it is. Now, if I actually had a tribe and we were all doing that together, we could accomplish a lot more. They say that our ancestors, tribal people from the past, worked an average of four hours a day. Um, and you might say, well, yeah, they didn't have much. Well, they didn't have a lot of things. So, but they did have a lot of time together, a lot of ceremony, a lot of shared work experiences where work wasn't something that like was over here by itself. It was integrated in the everyday life, the everyday interaction of everyone working together. So I feel a little bit more tribal, you know, working on all my own stuff in my van, as silly as that may sound. Again, adjusting to the new paradigm. But the biggest, biggest thing is we don't know what's coming next. So if you're, you've got that little bit of credit left, that savings, those last couple unemployment checks coming in perhaps, I would suggest that instead of spending that on rent, that you go ahead and get a van. You could put your money into a van and you don't have to get a particular special kind of van and you don't need a build out. You don't need any of that. What you need is a quick stop gap measure to get you through. So you can get a van, you can put a blow up bed in it, you can get a little cooler, a little stove, get some dry food, get some water, some blankets, and you're set. You've started. You can move into that van anytime. So uh, two ways of looking at this, if you were to go into van life now and get a van and then save the remaining amount of money that you have and stop spending it on the monthly bills that you're never going to get back. You could put it into a van and bank all of that. We don't know how much longer this is going to go on. In any case, if you've got a little minivan set up like that, that's parked in your driveway there, that would give you such peace of mind knowing that if you do lose your apartment, you've got somewhere to stay that's warm where you can lock the door. That is so crucial to a positive state of mind right now if you're really worried about it. And I would say... <clears throat> The other thing is you could use the van. Maybe you make a plan. Okay, for six months, I'm going to live in this van and I'm going to save everything I can. And in that time, I'm going to work if I can. And I'm going to sort of plan out my next move because now you will have left the apartment. You can even use that van to more easily move stuff to a new location, to a new town where there is a job. So this van can be a real stopgap measure just for now if you want to do it that way. And I feel like if I settle anywhere, I will always have a getaway van. There's no way that I'm putting my security into the idea of a month-to-month -month apartment um, with roommates or whatever the situation is. Within 30 days, I could be out of there for whatever reason. No, I'm always going to have a getaway van no matter what. If you're living in an apartment right now by yourself and you don't have any children um, and you've lost your job, what are you waiting for? Why are you still paying rent at that apartment? You're just sitting there. Unless you're, you know, and a lot of us have found a real joy in having this time off. If you do have a little bit of cushion, if you were able to look ahead or save anything and you have this cushion and you've been able to spend time baking and weaving and gardening and spending time with family, it's been a real blessing. But if you're not in that situation and you're getting to the end of your funds, your funds and your money, and you don't know what else is coming in, it's a really good time to get a van life. Now, the other thing, point here is, you know, we've been really counting on the government to send us all of these checks. And let me tell you, the $1,200 check that I got out of the blue, I loved it. I loved getting that. I've never gotten anything, you know, from, I don't get government assistance of any kind or benefits or anything like that. Um, I don't have anything coming in from them. And to get that $1,200 check was amazing. But the idea, and I hear in the news these stories of when is the next check coming and when are they going to extend unemployment benefits? But those forms of money that are coming in, people are talking about it like, what are we going to do if the government does not send us another check? You know what? We shouldn't be so dependent on the government to send us another check. We really need to take this into our own hands. And if that necessitates that you pare down a bunch of stuff that you don't want to get rid of, that you give up your cute little apartment, so be it. Those are the facts of life. This is a reality check. This whole situation, we don't know what's coming next. And even if this government were to continue to just dole out checks to everybody, both unemployment and stimulus checks and whatever, how long can that really go on? Is that going to be the new state of things? I mean, is this a, a socialistic country? I mean, that is not... 
how we do things here. And it, it simply cannot go on forever. It will absolutely bankrupt this country. So that is not a long-term permanent solution. And it looks like with the second wave coming that the government is very willing to do more lockdowns, to keep businesses shut down, to put more restrictions on people, as if that wasn't affecting us so much to the point that we're almost at our breaking point here for many, many people. So I'm just here to tell you, really, you aren't hobbled because so many of us have so much stuff, so much adjusting that we can do to this new paradigm. It's just now is the time to do that. So a lot of people have been wondering, is it a good time for van life? And I wanted to just bring up this last point here that a lot of people have gone, you know, into the woods, built cabins, Eamon and Beck, um, uh, Trent and Ali, these top Van Dweller YouTube channels, Van Dweller people, they've settled, um, Pandemonium, they got land and are partially settled. So a lot of people have been asking this question, like, maybe it's too scary of a time for van life out here and we should settle. Um, and my feeling is that that's not true. I mean, you can settle if you want to, but I think it's a perfect time for van life because of the frugality of it. If you can't bring in more money, you've got to lower the expenses on this end. And it's, there are so many ways that you can do that. Um, and so, yeah, I think it's a good time for van life. And I don't think it's scary, particularly because you can move to different areas. And like I said, I moved up here to Northern California where it was a lot safer. That's not why I did, but, um, well, I moved up here cause it's a lot safer in general. Um, <laughs> because it's a cleaner environment, there's less people, yada, yada, yada. But it turns out with the pandemic, it was a much safer to be, a safer place to be anyway. So who knows how far that is changing. I still think even if the cases are rising here, it's still one of the safest places to be in the country. And I still may go somewhere else. But that's the flexibility of van life, that I can drive around wherever I need to. So I hope that there's been some level of encouragement for you here because I'm feeling a real sense of urgency that we need to prepare for the unknown more than we ever have. So I know you've been getting your house in order. I know that um, people have been responding to this situation in their different ways, but if you haven't got your house in order, now's a really good time. It's, it's a wake up call. So thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it and got something out of it. And if you did, please push that like button and share this video with your friends. Also subscribe to my channel. I'd really appreciate it. Thanks for watching guys. We'll see you later. Bye.